Hi guys, welcome to another installment of Recreation Destinations and today we are, as promised, talking about wind generators. Specifically I want to talk about wind generators for RVs and whether you should or should not get one for your RV. I have purchased two of the cheap Chinese wind generators. This one on the table in front of me is the first one I purchased. And I believe it has, it is a five blade unit. I know it's a five blade unit because I've got the five blades here. And I believe it was a 1.4 meter span on the blades. So when you get your wind generator, it's going to be in a box and you have to assemble it. And basically you get the wind generator body, you get a hub like this, and then you get blades. They make them in several different blade counts, but the five blade units, probably the best bang for your buck, although they're a little bit harder to find. More aptly, uh, especially on, on places where you can get these cheap wind generators like Amazon or Alibaba, uh, you're going to find a lot of three blade units. Buyer beware on these units because the very first thing I want to talk about is the fact that they advertise these wind generators to produce huge amounts of electricity which they never do. Um, and I say never. Disclaimer, there may be a few out there uh, that produce the kind of electricity that they claim to this particular unit, now you'll notice right off the bat that I've modified the unit. And I'll talk about that later. I've added this piece of aluminum sheeting to the unit itself. Otherwise, it would look like that. Um, it would just be that shape. I added this to it, and I'll, I'll tell you why. This unit was advertised to be a 1200 watt output. I would have to go back through the specs I bought a long time ago, but I, I think it had a maximum wind speed of 75 or 100 miles per hour uh, that it could withstand. Problem with these wind generators is maybe, maybe the internals could withstand the heat uh, from generating electricity at 75 to 100 miles per hour, maybe this would produce 1200 watts. Um, but the reality is that the internals don't. They don't withstand that. And the lower the voltage that you are pushing out of this, the higher the amperage you're pushing out of it. And if you've seen any of my videos on electrical, RV electrical, you know that watts equals volts times amps. Uh, but maybe something I haven't really brought across to the audience is the reality that amperage is where the heat comes from. This is a permanent magnet alternator. And it's called an alternator because it produces alternating current. Um, it happens to be the guts out of that unit. And what you can see here is so you got three wires and you got, this is three phase AC, alternating current. So the current is alternating, boom, 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 boom. And then you hook this up to a rectifier that turns it into uh, DC voltage. It just puts out a DC voltage. And the voltage will rise and fall relative to the wind speed, how fast the blades are turning. So that's how these work inside. So you're going to see a specification on the sales site that says that these will start generating electricity at X wind speed. And it's usually in meters. You have to do the math on that in the United States. This wind generator starts producing electricity at about six miles per hour. I think it's two meters per second. Now the good thing about these wind generators is that the more load that these permanent magnet alternators have on them, when they're connected to your battery and your battery needs electricity, it needs to be charged up, it puts a load on this. And that load 
slows it down. So, you know, it's, it's like putting brakes on the car, uh, except the brakes are the batteries themselves that are wanting that electricity. So what this is going to do is when the wind speed picks up enough to start charging the batteries, and that's a term that uh, if you if you're into wind generation at all, you'll you'll learn that there's something called braking voltage, and the braking voltage is the voltage that your batteries are at at the moment. Up to that point, your wind generator will freewheel because it's not putting out as much electricity as your batteries already have in them. So it's, it's not doing anything but spinning and being a nice decoration on top of your RV, since we are talking about RV power. Once these blades start the wind generator spinning fast enough to go over that braking voltage, then it will start putting wattage or amperage into your batteries while and at that point that's when your batteries put a load on the wind generator itself and so the more the more amperage or watt hours that your batteries need inside them to fill them back up the more load that it puts on the generator and and you'll find you'll find a yin and yang uh, push and pull relationship between the wind speed and your battery levels if you decide to put one of these on your RV. At some point the wind is going to make these blades spin around fast enough where it reaches your braking voltage and then the amount of wind that you have relative to how much juice your batteries want is, is what's going to make this thing charge. I brought up the fact that this one, they stated it was 1200 watts. There is no way in hell that this thing would ever produce 1200 watts because what happened is here where I am in the high desert, uh, we get really strong winds in the fall, winter, and spring. Uh, wind storms come across because there's there's really nothing blocking the wind. There's no trees and I'm, I'm in a valley so the wind will come over the mountains and drop down into the valley and there's nothing slowing it down so we really often get often get 20 to 30 mile per hour winds and uh, regularly we we get gusts of 60 to 75 miles per hour 